Today is serendipity day. We are jumping in the car. We're going to head up to Buena Park. Not sure what we're going to see. My dad used to call these serendipity days because we don't know where we're going to end up. But we are headed towards Buena Park. The ultimate goal is Knott's Berry Farm, or at least the marketplace, to see what's going on there. And we need to see Rufus, probably get some biscuits. Always up for the biscuits. But let's see what else is open up that way. Not sure. We're, we're going to find out. It's, it's all a mystery. It's all serendipity. The first stop on Serendipity Day is Portillo's Hot Dogs. So we were driving by Portillo's and it was like, hey, they don't have much of a line at all. Now the inside is closed, but the drive through was open. So we were able to get Portillo's Hot Dogs to go. And it looks like we have ordered, let's see, what do we have? We have a French fries, which their French fries are really good. They're like a crinkle cut. And then we have a hot dog, and then we have an iced tea. So This is the hot dog from Portillo's. It is yummy, yummy, yummy. Now, I just got mustard on there. I know they do chili, and they do a lot of amazing things, but right now, I'm just having mustard, and it is awesome. In the same parking lot as Portillo's hot dogs is Buena Park downtown. Now, I don't know if it is called Buena Park downtown or it's Buena Park Mall now or it used to be Buena Park Mall anyway it used to be Buena Park Mall when I used to come here now I think it's called Buena Park downtown anyway it's been open um until I think two weeks ago and now it's interesting because it just says that the uh outdoor retail is open so let's go see what we can find out it says outdoor retail open Buena Park downtown so this is the main entrance. You can see there's a Ross, uh, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings, DSW, and there's the entrance for John and, John's Incredible Pizza, which I'm sure is not open. But they've got these tents set up here, which is very, very interesting because there's nothing under them. They're just empty tents, it looks like. So maybe on the weekends they do set up retail stores out here. I don't know because it says retail open. So I don't know if that just means like Ross and the places that have outdoor doors or if it means that they actually bring tables out here maybe on the weekend. But it looks like the main doors are closed. Yeah, it says no entry, no entry. It says no mask, no entry. I don't know what's going on. Let's find out. I think we can't get in because all malls have been shut down at this point but this is where you used to be able to go in you used to be able to go in here and they would take your temperature now it looks like it's blocked off this is the john's incredible pizza walk-in entry which is normally really cool just to come in this way is a lot of fun and there's a security guard there so this is blocked off this entrance if you come around though i know tj maxx is open over here and there are places that you can still get in from the outside so i guess that's basically what it is if they have an outdoor entrance then they are open but if they are inside the mall they are closed so that's kind of where the line is, is drawn for that. Because this is TJ Maxx and they're open here. So that's okay. This is insides looking out into the mall, which is closed. You can see the little rides over there. Normally children would be riding those little rides that the lights are still going, but they're closed. Oh, so sad. Here we are at Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, and this is fascinating. I mean, we're right on Beach Boulevard, around the corner from Knott's Berry Farm, and there is a Farrell's here, which I don't even know if I, know if I knew this Farrell was here. Farrell's was here. It looks like it was, it's gutted inside, so maybe this one went out of business a while ago. Anyway, it's completely empty, and you can see... It's, it doesn't, I mean, it says now open, but obviously it's not now open. It's obviously completely 
empty inside there. So it's too bad, you know, Farrell's is kind of a neat place and it's unfortunate to see it like this because you can see it's, it's decorated, it's beautiful. It's almost like someone could just come in and take over, but for now it looks pretty empty. So I don't know the story of Farrell's. It's kind of interesting here in, in Buena Park. Now we are on the corner of Crescent and Beach Boulevard. There is the sign for Knott's Berry Farm. And this is a great corner because it means we're turning into Knott's Berry Farm. And this is how you get to the parking for the marketplace. So right now they're not charging anything for parking. So any time of the day you want to come and visit the chicken dinner restaurant and you want to find Rufus and you want to walk around in the shops, and come to the Taste of Calico if you're able to get tickets for that. That was that was really fun the other night. Anyway, this is how you, you come. You come in here and you park over into that parking lot right there. So we're on our way over there waiting for the light to change. This time I've got my food for Rufus loaded up in my purse. So we're ready to go and find Rufus. So this is the parking lot that he used to hang out in. I mean, you used to come through here and, you know, he was always either along here or along here or somewhere along this path. But I'm pretty sure he's decided he's moved in closer to all the picnic tables. <laughs> I think he knows he's going to get a lot more food and treats over by the picnic tables. So I used to come and find him here all the time, but this time we are headed in to the park. And there it is, silent, no roller coaster, no children laughing. It's still very, very abandoned looking. So luckily the marketplace is open and hopefully we can find Rufus. Okay, look at this, this is funny. Someone else is feeding Rufus. I see three distinct piles of food for Rufus. Somebody's feeding him and yet, I do not see him yet. He must be over there. I think he's got a lot of fans. <laughs> There's Rufus. Hi, Rufus. Rufus, you're laying over on your side. Ah, oh, you're so cute. Oh my gosh. Does he stay out here all the time now? Or does he go in at night? Yeah. So beautiful. Hey Rufus, what you doing Rufus? Rufus, what you doing? Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful you are. He's spreading out his wings. Yeah, I know, he looks like he's he's having a nap. Oh, something woke him up. Rufus, what you doing? Oh, you beautiful thingy. Oh, all of a sudden he's decided I need to go. Rufus, where are you going? gift shop is open and welcoming boysenberry products still out here lots of cool cool things nobody's in this shop so if you want to come shopping midweek this is the time to come because this is really oh look at that <laughs> okay bigfoot has a giant mascot <laughs> You look kind of scary, Bigfoot. Well, they've got a lot of great products and this is such a nice shop. Inside of Virginia's, there is a history wall that starts in 1910. And there they are, Walter and Cordelia Knott. And it tells the story in photographs. You go along the wall here, you can see how, you know, there we are, 1930, Knott's special dinner southern fried chicken so it all started with the chicken dinner restaurant my grandmother used to come here she loved it she would take people on a tour in the 40s and 50s and then my mom took over taking people on tours in the uh, 60s and so forth and you can see the wall comes along here 
keeps going and then it turns to this side. We're still in the 50s and 60s. And this is where you see Bud Hurlbut, who was a friend of ours, who actually invented the train and the log ride. So he, he built those, Calco Mine or Train, and Independence Hall. There's Bud Hurlbut again with Walter Knott. And now we go along to the 70s. And this is what I remember coming as a little kid. And that's where it ends. It looks like it ends right there in the 70s. So, comes around here, there's a big giant map. So this is really cool, this history wall that's right here in the middle of, of Virginia's. So if you ever wanna come and really take your time studying history of Knott's Berry Farm, this is a great place to come. Looks like they're still set up here for the Taste of Calico. So this is where you line up to go into Taste of Calico, Fridays, Saturday, and Sundays. So they've continued those on through August. And I think there's still tickets available. So that was definitely a fun thing to come to. And coming around the corner here over by Starbucks, pretty empty. Again, if you come during the week, it's really beautiful to just walk around. The weather is perfect. Love living here where it's nice and hot out. And you can come and pretend like you're at a theme park, even though we're on the other side of it. It's okay. You can come and have Starbucks, sit out here in the beautiful sun. There's the panning for gold. No panning going on right now. Can't wait for this to open back up again. Panning for gold. I can't believe they still do that. That's so cool. That's one thing I do remember as a kid is coming here and panning for gold. Surprisingly, Build-A-Bear Workshop is open. Now we know the one at Downtown Disney left altogether, I think. But this one is here and this one is open. You can go in and build a bear. Wow, that would be great. Workshop is limited to 20 people at one time. So it looks like you can have your party here. This is the back corner, the farthest you can walk. You can see the roller coaster there. So we are back here on the back side, kind of by the chicken dinner restaurant. So I know you can sit outside here at the chicken dinner restaurant. You can also sit outside down the main thoroughfare. But again, nobody is really here right now. It's kind of a good time to be here. It's just so nice. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday. That's, that's probably the best time to come if you want to just have some time alone relaxing. back over here by the chicken to go and the bakery so if you come in the candy parlor you will see they have these candies all the way back from 1900 so there's 1900 1920 I know my dad used to like some of those candies there from 1920 1930 see those don't recognize any of those myself but that's kind of fun that those come from 1930. okay here we've got 1940. coffee candy espresso candy rip rolls i've heard of those before it's kind of fun rock candy lots of rock candy down here now that i remember being able to get rock candy as a little kid it's like they're all on sticks everything's individually wrapped here we go, the 1950s, 60s, 70s, black cow. Remember those? Sugar babies, oh my gosh, I think you can still get some of these. Of course, hot tamales, 
Mike and Ike, Pop Rocks. Yay, the 70s and Pop Rocks. Woohoo. Definitely remember those. <laughs> and we've got 80s. Let's see what's special for the 80s. Mint, Mentos, Charleston Chews. Those are the 80s. Oh, here we go. 90s and now. It looks like the 90s and now are all about the Caribou Gold Bears. All of those. <laughs> what a cool store. So this is a lot of fun to come in here to the Candy Palace. It's right next to the chicken kitchen area. So it's on this side. Okay, headed out from Knott's Berry Farm Marketplace. That was a lot of fun to see what was going on. Very nice. So far, we haven't heard as of this date if the Halloween haunt is happening or not. Everything else is kind of canceled. Universal is canceled. Disney is canceled. The most places are all canceling the Halloween events, but Knott's Berry Farm hasn't officially announced whether they're canceling Knott's Scary Farm Halloween Haunt yet. So we're hanging on to some hope, but it is just maybe a month away at this point. So not looking too good. Anyway, this is, this is a good day. Very nice being out here in Buena Park. And yes, I got a dozen biscuits. Yummy yum. They come with three boysenberry jams, which is barely enough. <laughs> if you want to get more, you have to buy the, the whole jar. But anyway, it is yummy. And these biscuits are so good. Oh my gosh. Don't go home and eat them.